and welcome to The Modern Lady, where you'll learn how to elevate your life with elegance. I'm Deborah. If you're new to my channel, please hit that red subscribe button so that you can get an update when I've got a new video to share. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you ladies so much for your continued love and support for my channel. I appreciate and adore you all. In today's video, I'm so excited to share with you an interview. And this interview is in a series called Pearls of Wisdom, where I shine a spotlight on elegant women that believe in the power of style and sophistication. Today's guest is none other than Ina from Norway. She is a YouTube creator that has a channel called The that feminine housewife, and I'm so excited to share with you Ina, and she is amazing. I absolutely adore her channel. She talks about housekeeping and femininity and confidence, and I'm so excited that she is here with us today. Ina, welcome to The Modern Lady. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, we are so excited to hear from you. And so why don't we just get started with you sharing your story behind how you started That Feminine Housewife. Right. So the idea behind um, That Feminine Housewife is that I've wanted to have a channel where I talk about things. Well, I guess my name kind of hints to it, that it's twofold, right? That it's femininity and then being a modern housewife. So um, I just wanted to create content really for people who um, maybe they were feeling like they were kind of suppressing some of their femininity or, I mean, kind of adapting more of a like um, mainstream way of being, but then really wanting to be more feminine, wanting to be more elegant and wanting to tap into what it means to be a woman. And so um, that's that part of my name, I guess, and my YouTube channel. But then I also have the other part of creating content on being a modern housewife and what that means and um, sharing tips and tricks as well as encouraging people that want to be housewives or homemakers or stay at home moms or work at home moms, whatever you want to call it, and making it seem relatable and um, approachable and uh, helping people that don't um, and necessarily live that kind of lifestyle, understand what it's like, and then also encouraging people that are living that kind of lifestyle. Perfect. I love that. And I love all of your, your videos and all of the inspiration that you share. So Ina, Thank I know you. you talk about this on your channel. You're welcome. And I was wondering if you could share with us, I know that you talked about this on your channel. You deleted several videos that were about the topic of the Christian faith. And so can you talk about why you made that transition? I know you've shared it on your channel, so I wanted yes. to definitely um, just highlight why you made that transition and, and allow you to share that story. Wow, that's, that's a great question. So yes, yeah, so I was uh, very public about my rebranding. I started out doing or devotional videos, more like trying to reach women. And I did talk about some of the topics that I actually am talking about now, but they were more from like a faith perspective and reaching out to women of faith. But <laughs> what's kind of funny and what ended up happening is that a lot of men were attracted to my videos. And that's what I share in that video that you're referring to, that a lot of um, men were drawn to my videos. And I looked at my analytics. I'm still not a pro at that kind of stuff, but I saw that, okay, like 70% of my audience is male. Something is wrong here. Um, so I just, I kind of lost a little bit of interest in making videos because my purpose was to reach women. Uh, and it was, it's not like I'm against men, obviously I'm married to a man. I have, um, a boy, a baby boy. So I, I, there's nothing like that. It's just that my target audience was the opposite gender us ladies, and I wasn't really reaching them. And so I kind of gave up on the whole YouTube thing for a while. And then I just started, um, thinking like, how can I, like come back and reach the right people. And that's why I made that transition into talking more about femininity and, um, you know, a little bit about uh, elegance and talking about homemaking because I thought that that would really hit home with a lot of women and then have my faith more as something that I'm open about, but it's not the main portion of my videos, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, I love that. And that's so important to be able to reach the intended audience. So I think that transition and, and for you to have the courage to do that is absolutely amazing. 
So let's talk about <laughs> Thank you. one of your videos, How to Feel Feminine. I love that video. Can you share <laughs> Thank you. with us why femininity is so important to you? Yeah, sure. So um, femininity is obviously just being a woman, right? It's um, uh, the, any, doing anything or being anything pertaining to the female gender. So um, I think femininity is important to me because I felt for a long time that I was just uh, trying to, obviously it sounds like a cliche, but just fit in, right? And to do what was expected of me and kind of suppress those parts of me that were more uh, gentle and more kind of wanting to beautify myself, wanting to beautify my surroundings, uh, be, um, you know, anything and everything that has to be with being a woman. And so I just decided one day, you know, I woke up and I was just like, I want to live my life the way that I feel created to be and in that feel more fulfilled. And so I just decided to learn more about what it is like to be a feminine woman and then to adapt that to my own life. And I saw great. Um, uh, I saw a lot of joy come back in my life and a lot of uh, freedom come back in my life and a lot of confidence come back in my life because I was just being myself. And so I'm encouraging other women to do similar things, um, whether it is relational wise or, uh, you know, uh, in your character or in your hobbies and interests, that if that's something that you want to do, that you could try it out and see how it changes your life as a woman. I love that creating joy through the the art really of femininity. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned at the beginning you alluded to the fact that in mainstream culture now a lot of people do look at femininity and they they discount it. They think that it's a weakness or you're um you know not necessarily being strong or smart or capable and I just have to wholeheartedly disagree with that because I think that for women to embrace the things that make us women is one of the most powerful things that we can do when you're talking about just living in your authenticity. So I adore that. <laughs> Thank you. I agree with you. Yes, you're welcome. So I know you talk a lot about housekeeping on That Feminine Housewife, and mm -hmm. it's so important. I think that it's really important for us to have a clean space, a bright space, a, a place that we can feel inspired because when we're in that environment, it really affects how we feel and how productive we are. So you're a busy mom of two, and I was yes. <laughs> share with us, how do you keep your house clean regularly at home? Right. So I am a huge fan of bulking up similar tasks in like the same day. So I know it has a name, that kind of schedule, but I forget what it is. But it's like when you do kind of all your errands on one day and then you do all your cleaning on one day and then you do all your studying or whatever on one day. I'm a student, actually a part time student. So I'm a huge fan of bulking up and even within the day when it comes to micro tasks, I tend to want to rather bulk up similar tasks as opposed to switching between them because I feel like that gives me decision fatigue and I don't always know what to prioritize and all of that switching can be wasteful as well on time. So I just feel um, that something that has really worked for me has been to bulk up all of my tasks. And when it comes to cleaning, I think the way that I clean is that instead of going, I mean, my kids are at home, right? So, cause I'm a, um, a housewife. So, uh, a lot of mess happens at home when you're at home, um, all the dishes and all the toys, you know, um, the laundry that comes. Um, so I have found that instead of going throughout the day and like picking up here and picking up there, that's something I would do if I was single because I know that it would stay there, but because you have, I have kids, they take it down or they replace it anyway. So what I've decided to do is I, throughout the day, I let them play. I let it be messy because that's kind of the work portion of the day. Uh, and then when it comes closer to the evening, right before my husband comes home and I want to create more of a pleasant environment for us to be in after his work, um, that's when I really focus on cleaning. So I'll give the kids something to do, something um, that keeps them occupied or put my youngest baby to sleep. And I'll let them just do that while I focus on doing some speed cleaning. And usually 
all I have to focus on then is to not have them mess it up even more and to like clutter even more after that. So if I can do that, then usually the house stays tidy for that half of the day. So honestly, that's my system. I know people do differently. I know some are great at that picking up things throughout the day. But for me, I, I just find myself doing that all day and nothing else. So I would rather just do really focused cleaning right before I need it to be clean than, yeah, doing it all day, basically. I love that. And I think that I have the problem of getting distracted really easily. Yeah. So because I love <laughs> to have an orderly home, I honestly will just, like you said, go yeah. throughout the day, pick things up, pick things up every, you know, 15 minutes or something. But I have a puppy and just <laughs> children. <laughs> yeah, I can there. understand that. And you just have to let things happen and then choose one or two times during the day. Like you said, I think that system is really helpful because it will kill your time to constantly yeah. clean up and tidy up every hour on the hour. Yeah. And so I, exactly. system. I think that's going to be helpful to someone out there trying to figure out how to maintain a clean home, but also not just endlessly spend time cleaning. <laughs> exactly. That's right. So in your video about being assertive, you talk about how it's not typically associated with femininity. And why do you think that there's such a disconnect between being assertive, but also being feminine? Right. So um, yeah, assertiveness, I think it's, it's more so I don't think it's not necessarily that I mean, people know there are girl bosses out there, you know, women who are strong and who are able to say no and stuff like that. But I just think that people know even more so that there are men out there because um, men tend to be uh, the assertive type. The one to, I mean, I saw a statistic the other day that was like, it was like a huge portion of men are not afraid to ask for a raise. And there was like the tiniest portion of women who were afraid to assert themselves in front of their boss and ask for a raise. And that's just one example of uh, a way to be assertive. But I think it represents that men tend to have a lot more ease in putting aside their emotions than we do because we're such emotional beings as women and put that aside in a conversation to think of how to prioritize and what to say yes to and what to say no to. So I think it's just that men are stereotypical, very assertive, at least very masculine men are. So I think since that's kind of attributed to them, it doesn't make sense to also attribute it to women, but I think it is in a lot of women. Uh, to be assertive and to to tap into that and to learn how to be that because we as women we also know really well how to prioritize and how to what's important in life for us and what we want to say yes to and no to so I think it's just about learning the skill and knowing that it's okay and how to do it in a graceful and feminine way and that would set a lot of women off for success in assertiveness I think but it's just not something that's talked much about and I think we could do good in like teaching women or encouraging other women to say no when they literally don't have time for something or um, saying yes to the things that are important to them. Exactly. You have to have that power to say no when you don't have the time and saying yes to the things that serve you. And that's a really good segue into my next question about prioritizing time. I think mm -hmm. sometimes women want to be people pleasers. They want to just always make sure that others are served, others are happy. And so as moms and wives, sometimes it's really hard to not take on too much and, and not be overburdened. So yeah. do you have any tips on how a woman who is really struggling with prioritizing her time, how she can do that more effectively? Yes. Um, I do. Um, so definitely that system that I talked about of bulking similar tasks together, whether that is on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, I think that could help a lot of people like you and I, Deborah, who get super distracted really easily because there's so many things we could be doing with our days, right? And it's sometimes hard to know exactly what to do. But if you've, you know, what I do personally is like I have Sundays is a YouTube day. That's when I record all my videos. And then um, Wednesday is my editing day, right? And then the other days of the week I had, for instance, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays are my study days. And then um, let, uh, errands come usually later in the week, right? So 
I, I find that that's a really effective system because I don't really have to make any decisions. I just go on autopilot and it makes me a lot more effective and it allows me to get really hyper-focused on the, that thing that I am doing and being effective in it. And it's not like, you know, let's say I recorded a video every day, right? Uh, did it that way as opposed to doing it on one day. Then I, ha that's fine. I, I could probably do that if I didn't have kids, but then I would have to get dressed every day, set up my lights, right? Um, make sure that my memory card is empty and have my batteries charged but if I just bulk a similar activity all in one day I find that the preparation for it also is a lot easier and it just goes for a smoother experience for me personally so I've already mentioned that the second tip that I have is to, uh, that has really helped me has been to wake up early um, so I'm I'm naturally like a type B I think or at least like somewhere in the middle between an A and a B person where I, I, do you say this in America, by the way, a B person is somebody who wakes up later? Yeah. I, I think I've heard the term before. But okay. Maybe it's a European term. I'm sorry if it is. But uh, what I meant to say is I'm naturally somebody who is a night owl as opposed to some like an early bird. So I, I always found myself staying up late and being productive, but then feeling like I was kind of um, catching up the day after because I would sleep longer. Um, and what it did to my psychology was that just that I, I felt like I was behind everybody and, and it kind of gave me a bad start to the day. It wasn't like a catalyst to get me going. Um, but when I started waking up earlier and even earlier than my husband or, um, you know, the world or whatever, then I felt like I was kind of ahead and that I, okay, now I got A, B and C done before anybody even woke up. And it doesn't really matter, but it's just, it made me motivated to think that I was like kind of ahead as opposed to hanging, like, you know, hanging on barely when I woke up. So that's something that sped up my productivity because it motivated me and it made me feel like I could accomplish anything as long as I am able to wake up early and go to bed on time. Yes, yes. Ladies, I've heard that before. Waking up early is just so incredibly helpful to get up before your husband and children because it gives you just a little bit of personal time, but you also have the time to work on certain things and just be productive earlier in the day. I know that looking at a lot of routines and schedules and habits of Fortune 500 CEOs and really successful people, waking up early is one common theme that they all share. So whenever you're creating those routines, having a morning routine, having that structure, the earlier, the better. <laughs> yes, definitely. So I know on your YouTube channel, That Feminine Housewife, Ina, you have talked about suits a little bit, yeah. and that's a TV show that I remember watching years and years ago, um, quite honestly, before, you know, Meghan Markle became the, the Duchess of Sussex, yes. um, but I, I love suits, and so I'm curious to know if you could share with us any television any television shows or any movies that you enjoy getting some classy and feminine inspiration from? So that one, uh, that's a great question. So I, in answering this, I'm a little bit unsure what to say because I, I'm kind of behind on watching a lot of the classics like, um, you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's. I'm, I was honest about that in one of my videos, still haven't watched that. I've also heard of a movie called Priceless that a lot of women seem to like. I haven't watched them though, and so I can't recommend them. And, and I could recommend, you know, obviously Downton Abbey and Suits and um, let me think, um, what's that show again? No, the movie series by Jane Austen, like, um, I can't think of the name right now. Jane Austen, um, stood still here. But anyway, I, I could mention those movies. But the thing is, I, I'm so behind on watching like uh, motivational like movies or things like that to get me inspiration or give me ideas. Because honestly, I just find motivation in almost anything that I watch, like even if it is a like not necessarily a typical um, like something you would watch to get inspiration for elegance or sophistication, because even if the person you're watching or the characters that are displayed aren't necessarily what you would think of as feminine or classy or elegant, 
um, you can still examine their characteristics and look at their style and see what you do not want to emulate <laughs> or examine why does that lady give me a kind of like a bad feeling in my stomach? Is it because she's being too you know, careless about herself, or is it because she does not respect for herself, or watching an elegant lady show up and see what, you know, what did the producers think here? Why did they all of a sudden introduce this contrasting lady? What What is good about her? What is bad about her? Um, and then also about men, I like examining, and my husband and I will discuss, like, what makes this man, like, a very masculine man? Why did they choose him for the role? And, like, um, all those kinds of questions. So honestly, I just find inspiration from anything that I watch. And obviously there's YouTube, but you asked about movies and, um, and TV shows. I honestly just find inspiration from anything. And especially you, who I recently discovered after you reach out to me, uh, I find inspiration from you and your Instagram. And honestly, I think YouTube is more of a resource like that for me to enjoy watching any kind of movie or series and seeing what I want to emulate and what I should stay away from, if that makes sense. Yes, I love that. And I think that's such a good point that you can take inspiration from anywhere, from the people around you in your office at work, from the people that you encounter running errands, going to the farmer's market, just in daily life, as well as any television show or any movie, not necessarily just something from the golden era or a movie yeah. with only certain actresses. You can really find inspiration everywhere. So, uh, Ina, I'd love to know from you, who is your favorite elegant role model? Wow, what a great, oh, that's awesome. Great question. Uh, let me think so that I answer what's true. Let me think. <laughs> So in terms of style, I, I definitely love, like we mentioned, Meghan Markle or the Duchess now. I love her style. I think she is definitely, I would say, a modern, uh, very modern, classy lady. Kate Middleton, obviously, too. But I feel like Kate, uh, I feel like Meghan Markle has more of a modern twist and a very, um, I, I call it very, it's almost a little bit more European, even though ironically she's the American um it's it's very like simple not too much uh, but like it's almost a little understated classiness and also the way that she talks uh, she's a very intelligent woman and um I think I would choose her definitely for style I in far as far as conduct goes and a class goes I honestly am just thinking of women in my life that I already know <laughs> And I don't want to share their names on here because that would be kind of, I don't want to do that without their permission. But I have somebody like that I try to emulate in my life that are role models to me here. Um, but as I don't really know anybody that I could say off the top of my head. I'm sure there's somebody, but um, that are kind of like known all over. But I think that's my answer. So Meghan Markle and then somebody that I know here for conduct. Okay. I love yes. that. Absolutely. And I would have to agree that, um, you know, the Duchess of Cambridge and the Duchess of Sussex, they have similar but different styles. And I yeah. think it's really exciting to see the differences because if they're walking around looking like clones, then it's really not an opportunity for them to personally express their personalities and, and who they are. And so I, I believe that our style is, is really meant to be a visual presentation of who we are. And I love that they do differ. So I'm yes. so happy that you shared that and pointed that out, that distinction, because I, I love both of their styles. And I think it's fun to, uh, to watch them really be authentic in, in sharing who they are. Exactly. So last question for you, Ina. What is yes. one piece of timeless advice, or as I like to call it, a pearl of wisdom that you live by every single day? Yes, great question. So I would say, uh, hmm, wow, there's a lot that I actually live by, but if I'm going to go buy one piece of wisdom, and I don't have a cool way of saying this because I, I don't remember where I saw this quote, but um, it is that I try to like have my long-term goals be aimed really high, but then on my day-to-day -day basis, I have really low expectations to myself. And that is not because I aim low in life or don't want to, you know, do that big kind of 
overarching goal, but because I don't want to live in constant guilt of everything that I don't accomplish in a day. Because I tend to be the person that set up the schedule and say, okay, I could technically do all of these things today to accomplish my bigger goal. And I could technically do all of these bigger things tomorrow. But then, you know, I have kids, so kids come in the way. And then like today, like the internet's going to go out, right? <laughs> so, well, it, those who don't know, like we were talking behind the scenes about um, my internet uh, being cut out today. But anyway, things happen and then um, you end up just not reaching all of those plans, right, that you have for the day. So I like just setting really small goals to begin with, like having three or four things that I want to accomplish that day. And then rather feeling happy and energized to do more then I want to put up like all these 20 things that I want to accomplish and then only meeting five of them and living, just feeling like I'm living behind on my schedule constantly and, and feeling guilt and feeling like I have a stick as opposed to a carrot. So I, that's something that I live by. I have like big long-term goals, but then I have very, you know, little by little, little becomes a lot for day to day planning. I love that. And I, I forget the name of the person. I don't recall who said this first, but I think there's something called the compound effect where you do what you're talking about. You make these incremental steps towards progress and over the long term, you can achieve so many significant things. And so I love that. I think that helps us to not be overburdened and overstressed. Yes. And as women, we definitely have a tendency to do that. Yes. I think so as well. Well, Ina, thank you so much for being on the channel. And I'm so excited that we were able to connect today. Can you share with us where are the best places for people to find you online? Sure. Yeah. So um, obviously my YouTube channel is where I'm primarily at, at That Feminine Housewife here on YouTube. So that's my screen name there. And I have also an Instagram, but that's about it. And that's with the same name. So That Feminine Housewife. That's basically all the places you'll find me at this point in time. So um, those are my two places you'll find me. Perfect. And ladies, I've got the description below. Um, the links are in that description. So feel free to follow her on Instagram. Definitely subscribe to her YouTube channel. Ina is amazing. Ina, thank you so much for being on The Modern Lady. It was such a pleasure. Thank you, Devereaux. I love being here. <laughs> so ladies, I'd love to know from you. We talked a lot in this video about creating joy in your life and really get having a sense of structure and order, getting some order into your life and into your routine. So I would love to know from you, how do you manage your time at home? Is it maybe with a calendar? Is it with to-do lists? Is it a sticky note system? Whatever you're doing to create order and structure, which is really going to relieve your stress and create joy in your life share with us in the comment below and we will keep the conversation going thank you ladies so much for tuning into the video if you did enjoy this elegant interview please do give it a thumbs up to share some youtube love and i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye for now <laughs>